All true believers know that Venom is one of Spider-Man's fiercest foes. His origins are so tightly tied to the Web Slinger that even considering a Venom solo movie without Spidey is it's just preposterous. So what are the current rumors? That Sony is developing a Venom standalone movie that has no ties to Tom Holland's take on Spider-Man or the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All I can say is Sony? The hell? Sony has been pushing for a Venom movie as far back as 2007. That same year saw the release of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 a film that comic book fans seem to despise because of the misuse of and bad casting of Venom. Oh, and the dancing. But that's another story. The character was only included in the film at the insistence of the studio. Raimi didn't want him in there. Turns out they should have listened to their director. They tried to revive Venom for the Amazing Spider-Man universe. Fortunately, that one got scrapped and paved the way for the deal that sent Spider-Man to the MCU. But now we've gotten word that in October 2018, a solo Venom movie will be released that is unrelated to the massively successful Marvel Universe. My question is, which version of the character are they going to use? The original Eddie Brock version? How about Matt Gargan or Flash Thompson's Agent Venom? While these could potentially be interesting for what's labeled as an action horror flick, to not start with Eddie Brock would do a huge disservice to the character and its fans. To understand why Spider-Man is so important to the origin of Venom, you have to go back to the source material. On a distant planet, Spider-Man picks up a new black costume that can mimic clothing, produce webbing without the need for cartridges, and just generally looks pretty badass. When Peter Parker realizes that the suit is alive and is trying to bond with him, he manages to separate from the symbiote with the help of the Fantastic Four. Feeling betrayed, the symbiote eventually latches onto a new host, one with a rage and hatred for Spider-Man. That host is Eddie Brock. Together, they form what comic fans came to know and love as Venom. He was a beefed up Spider-Man. He also had all of Spider-Man's powers and because the suit has spent so much time with Peter Parker, Venom doesn't trigger Spider-Man's spider sense giving him an advantage in the fight. He was potentially Spider-Man's deadliest enemy. But who cares about all that? Sony is scrapping that apparently in favor of what? Something. Who knows? Without Spider-Man in the story, it's not a Venom movie. It's a symbiote movie. And that can be a cool thing, but just don't call it Venom. Don't rob the fans of a chance to see the character done right. We were screwed over in 2007, let's not let that happen again. What's more is that if this Sony movie happens with no participation from Marvel, then we can pretty much forget an MCU appearance of Venom. And that's a damn shame. Look, I'm all for an R-rated horror-style Venom movie. I'm all for even going the Lethal Protector route. But to not include Spider-Man in it is ridiculous and shows how completely out of touch Sony is with this property. Maybe they'll prove me wrong and it'll turn out spectacular. But if they don't show Venom's true origin and ties to our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, it ain't Venom. And we've already had an ain't Venom. Don't give us another one. Instead, focus all your energy on that Black Cat and Silver Sable movie that you're trying to do. For whatever reason. It ain't because folks are clamoring for one. Two sexy fine characters indeed, but no one's favorite heroes. Come on, Sony, just let Marvel handle all that while you sit back and cash your fat checks for doing nothing but being lucky enough to own the film rights to one of the most popular characters ever. So what do you think? Leave a comment below and tell me if you're excited for this idea or do you think it's a train wreck in the making? I'm curious to know. And if you're so inclined, feel free to subscribe and hit that like button. It's appreciated.